Hello and welcome to Kyusak the Gamer. As me playing a new game. I will play, be playing Europa Universalis 4. And to me this game is a quite funny game. It's a grand strategy game where you play as a country and just try to conquer the world, I guess. Uh, well, in this let's play, I haven't chosen a country yet, but let's try to find something. I will do Iron Man mode, as usual, and, and as you can see here now, I have a lot of countries to choose between all the world. And uh, the starting date is 1444. So, so it's in the medieval times. Well, what country should we pick? Should we pick Sweden just because it's my first let's play in uh, Europa and I'm from Sweden. Right now I live in this region. So let's try that. Let's go then. We have some already saved up. I'll create a new Sweden. Start Iron Man. Yeah, I will overwrite it. Okay then, there's a lot of information to take in when uh, you see this game for the first time, but uh, all the numbers and things and pop-ups, it all helps you. Uh, all the buttons down here is different map modes to help you do some decisioning, like this is the political map mode, and the political map mode you you can see which count, which region belongs to. So this is Lithuania, for example, and uh, every country have their own color. Well, some colors can have the same one. Uh, terrain map mode. You can see if there is forest or over here mountains or over here. The more a snowy landscape. So, for example, in Russia here in November, the snow is starting to spread. And the same goes for Sweden here. Uh, we have the religion map mode. So, the most of the Europe is Catholic. Uh, Russia and uh, Lithuania is Orthodox, but. Uh, Counter Lithuania is uh, Catholic, but the regions is mo mostly Orthodox. And you can see Sunny and Shia. There's a lot more. You have uh, Hinduism and uh, Buddhism over here. But I can't see it because my ranged vision isn't that great right now. It will get better in time. The next is the Imperial map mode, and this is the HRE, or the Holy Roman Empire. And you can look at this little button. That shows who's the Holy Roman Empire. Right now it's Austria, and you have some electors that can become the next Holy Roman Empire. But right now all the electors is voting for Austria. They will compete to uh, be the leader. And one thing, if they manage to call all the imperial reforms, they will form or unite the Holy, Rome, Holy Romo, Ro Roman Empire and become just one big state. And if they succeed in that, they will be a, a real superpower. Uh, the next thing, thing is trade map mode, and uh, you see di different colors again. These colors represent a trade region. 
So you do want to own as much land as possible in that trade region so you can get so much money as you possible can. So I will, I will engage in this Baltic Sea region. Diplomatic map mode, you can see which one you're allied to. And uh, let's see if you can just lower that <laughs> music volume. Yeah. Well, okay. You can see which one you're allied to, or uh, have a war against, or if you uh, right now is a person personal union. I am a personal union right now under Denmark. And Denmark leads a personal union with Sweden and Norway, also known as the Kalmar Union in historical view. And this game tries to be as historical as possible. So this was the world in 1444, quite messy Europe, quite messy world. Uh, the Russia d doesn't exist yet, it's the Muscovy right now, but Usually, Muscovy will eat up uh, Novgorod and Kazan, Golden Horde, and form Russia. And Poland will most likely uh, engage in a personal union with Lithuania. That's also a historical thing. So let's see. I will. Uh, Explain more map modes when they become available. I have two diplomats I can send, so I will try to get some help. Let's try to get some help from the Hansa first. Yeah, they will help me. That's excellent. Will Novgorod help me? Yeah, they will. And that's two countries that, that will help me. Teutonic Order will almost help me, so will improve my relations with him. Let's see, we can have more troops. Two more troops. We have right now, let's check our troops. One infantry. And one, uh, seven infantry and two horses. Or cavalry. Well, let's make one more horse, I think, and one more infantry. And uh, if I go to diplomatic view, also you can see which regions I have cores in. So this is rightfully mine. Jämtland, Halland, Skåne and Blekinge. And I will pronounce this, the Swedish words correctly. <laughs> like Österjötland. But either way. Should I do something more? Yeah, you can uh, engage in missions and get uh, some bonus points. I will not improve relations with Denmark because I will try to break free from them as soon as possible can uh, improve our prestige or our Shiv religious unity. I think we have, if we look at our religious map mode, we have Shamanist here in uh, Lapland. We can try to change it, but it will take 66 months to do it. And it will increase revolt risk in that region alone. Well, let's try to do that because I think the, I will get some bonuses, which I like. So let's engage in that one. Now they will try to be unresty, so I will increase autonomy here. They will, <laughs> they will barely contrib contribute to my uh, country. But all all the good sake for them not to revolt against me and that's uh, that would be painful if they're starting to revolt me if I engage in a war 
And as for my ships, I need to make more ships, I think. I only have three light ships, seven galleys. I need a lot more because Denmark has a lot more than me. So let's make some galleys too. Uh, let's go over the force limit. When I go over force limit, I will pay extra for those. But it's worth it, I think. Let's engage. And I'm using space key to pause and unpause. And this little bar here is how fast the game goes. So let's have four right now. Because nothing will really happen in my country in the beginning. I'll try to have my... Well, let's say... Let's see here. I can gain papal influence. That's because I'm Catholic right now. So if I am good with the Pope, I can uh, be the Pope controller. But as Sweden, becoming Pope controller is rather slim. It's usually Castile who gets it. Or England, or France. Or the papal, the papal himself. So let's get prestige instead and lose some papal influence. As I said, I will uh, have my army uh, beside Norway's army, so I can squish them easily. And if I hover over here, you can see weight limit, which alloy supply limit is 28. That's awesome, and that's because I am uh, beside a a sea tile. This is 16 supply limit. Let's go there. This will probably probably alarm the Norway. So I have doubled, have doubled the army against Norway. But Norway have a terrain called forest. So when I'm attacking, dice rolls will be made, and I will have one less each turn. Let's try to earn some money from the Baltic. And yeah, I have three diplomats. Bad by me. Let's ask them to join my war. They will. Excellent. Will someone else join my war? No. Don't seem like it. But I think that's enough, really. Because if I start an independence war right now, all these guys will join. So let's try to uh, hide my ships for now. Get a. We'll make a general when we start the war because I will get a king. Right now, my king is Denmark's king. And uh, we don't want a Denmark's king. We, don't, we want a Sweden king here. I'm ready, I think. Let's declare independence for Sweden. And by doing that, I will lose one stability. And stability is perfect to have if you want a stable country. So I will fix that directly and I will spend 102 of of my 110 ad admin points administrative points of power to improve my stability let's do that let's make our king a general and hope is good Christoph one Vasa okay let's engage and this is just awesome because Denmark's army right now is stuck here in Gotland so I will try to punish him for that and for our next move we should try to ally, so ally someone Poland is quite far away let's improve with Poland try to have him with us and who else 
Who else do we want in our ally? We can maybe try to ally with Muscovy for for a beginning, but the the Muscovy who will form Russia will be an historical enemy to me. Just to follow the historical movement. Uh, and a, <laughs> a funny fact about Sweden and Denmark. Sweden and Denmark has the record in uh, total war against each other. <coughs> no other country has had been in war against each other as Sweden and Denmark has been. Almost every decade some dispute has been about this region. But uh, the one who stopped our wars were uh, Europe. They wanted to keep the power balance here. So if Sweden uh, were winning against Denmark, well then Euro Europe went in and crushed the Swedish army. And nothing more about that. They didn't go in to Sweden. They just said Sweden to stop. And if Denmark were winning, some other country or Europe just tell them to stop. And that war was over. <coughs> so no one really got their chances to expand. Yeah, nice. One uh, maybe is crushed. This one is crushed. Let's see, we are going... We're going uh, positive on, on our treasury, so we should hire some mercenaries. And that's some uh, history fact too. Sweden's army usually was only mercenaries in every war. Sweden had a, li a small army and a really big mercenary army. So. If after every war, Sweden were bankrupt every time. And that's why Sweden left the Catholic Church and just raided. Raided every church with their gold just to <laughs> pay back the debt and became Protestant instead. Yeah, some funny facts to know about. Well, it seems like Denmark is screwed right now. Because I have a lot of help. And I'm going to crush this Norway army. Nice. What I'm doing now, I'm sieging the province and I'm just leaving the right amount of. Uh, units to do it and you do it by this it says this will, this will de detach enough units to execute a siege properly and I can use shortcuts but it was quite a time ago I played this game let's go up to the Norway army and try to squish it before he makes too, too much of an army I only have three guys left, this main army, with only horses, so I will get, let's see, where do I look at that, I think it's here. You cannot have more than 50% cavalry compared to your infantry in battle, and I have 100% right now, so I will get a combat penalty, so I need to engage this one right now, because I will, I am I will have combat penalty. And nice, Novgorod is sieging up here. This seems to go really, really well. Denmark is trying to make some army, but he can't walk anywhere because this fleet is locating every passage and these passages you can go through it's rather silly that we can go through Skåne and to Skjellan 
Okay, so Novgorod is now at war with Muscovy. And that... Uh, it's no surprise to me. So I will decline this. I can't fight Muscovy. They have really good bonuses with uh, manpower and stuff. So they will probably eat up most of the Novgorod. So I will decline this. And Novgorod is still in my war. And I will fabricate a claim against Novgorod. Let's fabricate Neva, I guess. Just to take an opportunity when Novgorod is weak. So we can expand down here in the Baltic region. And hopefully we can get an alliance with uh, Poland. But Poland ha haven't formed personal union yet. If they don't, I will form an alliance with Lithuania. And if I get an alliance with Lithuania, I can probably declare a war against Muscovy. And you, you see here, he has a level 2 general, general with the stats 3, 4 and 3. 3 is for fire, 4 is for shock and 3 is for maneuver. So he's running quite quickly. And he has <laughs> right now 24 units. And one unit re represents 1000 manpower. And you can see for me here, I have 13 manpower, not the greatest. So the Norway, though, doesn't do any more units, okay. <laughs> okay, so he has done 5 units here, I can't really engage that. They're fighting against my ships, bad thing, bad choice. Nice. Just squished the Denmark army. I missed that because I do want to be in every battle if I can. What happened here? Did he really do that? So let's do this then. They will try to unsiege. What, what is the Teutonic doing? I don't know. Well, let's see. Uh, detach damage ships. Let's try to heal them up. I will detach one galley to keep the Gotland to see what's happening. So let's see. I will lose one stability or lose money. I will lose money. So this war is quite easy one. What I can do is to remain a personal union. But uh, I don't think so. But if I stay personal union I can just take uh, regions as much uh, as I want. And afterwards declare again against Denmark. But if I'm if I'm not independent, I can't declare war on uh, Novgorod. Ah, so Novgorod have Scotland as an uh, ally. That's hilarious. What? Don't we have a? Cosbelli against Novgorod. We should have. Let's see, diplomatic view. Yeah, we have. So that's really sweet. Let's uh, try to fabricate on uh, Norway here. The main uh, force to Denmark is in Gotland, and I will not engage that. That will be purely suicide. So let's go to Norway, just siege that up. 
So he's sieging Lapland. That's not good because I'm trying to convert that one. Hmm, damn. I need to abandon the siege. I need to try to hunt them away. And they can siege Lapland because Lapland has no buildings in it. No forts. So they only need one person to siege, siege that up. Hope I will succeed defeating him before he's complete. Yeah. Well, damn it. He succeeded. So now I need to unsiege it. The war is going great right now. We have some unrest because war, our war exhaustion is going up, and that that one that number is going up every time you lose some manpower. And I'm doing that right now by sieging. So I probably have one too many sieging province here. Let's go back with that one. We have siege this one. Let's go siege another province. There are too many. So where is my mercenary army? Okay. And if we uh, I have a new icon over here, that's my war. Now seventy four percent. Uh, yeah, 74% against him. I don't know what it's called right now. And you can see here, there's uh, war exhaustion. So no Novgorod is getting a quite high in war exhaustion. That's because of Muscovy. And the Denmark, Holstein, and Norway is having quite good. Their uh, war, they don't <laughs> want to be in the war anymore. So they will soon try to peace out. I will surely decline that offer. Let's see, you can go over there. You can go over there. I've unsieged Lapland. So I will try to convert Lapland again. They will try to unsiege Yemtland, it seems like. No, they are going to Dalaskogan. anymore where they're trying now not at all that army died so we have sieged almost every province to Denmark we want peace now so let's see, let's peace when our diplomat comes back. Let's just try to siege this province. So where is this army going? Probably to unsiege something. Hopefully Teutonic Order can do something about it. I have negative prestige, that's not good. And my <laughs> legitimacy is really bad. That's also too bad. So, Denmark, what are you willing to give me? You can release Scotland, cancel subjects. I do want to be independent. accept pretty big that's really nice twenty four ducats I don't know this peace treaty will give me 
one, two, three, four, five, six regions, and I can still fight Denmark over Gotland at a later time. Uh, seems quite nice that I can make Norway weaker too. Let's just take this peace offer. Some money, I guess. Yeah. I will get 30 aggressive expansion for this. Well, okay. Thank you so much. Let's go home with the troops. So, my true, all my troops should go over to Novgorod. Denmark is my rival. So now I can choose a rival. So I will choose Denmark and Novgorod. Who wants. The Vanian Order wants my alliance. Well, who are you allied to? Riga and Teutonic Order, okay? For now, I can accept that. Because they can probably join my war. Why not? They are threatened, so why do you want an alliance? Seems quite stupid to me. I need to hurry now with my troops. So let's see. Go over here. Over here. Up top. You can see what is sieging. Eight sieging here. Okay, nice. Just run my troops. Let's split up our barks. Our light ship barks. Uh, our trade merchant ships. So we should control Baltic Sea as much as possible. And if I go to the trade map mode. You'll see some special icons, like here in Danzig. And they, that will give them uh, positive, uh, well, let's say, pos positive trade power against me. Okay then, so we are independent now, we need alliances, would be great, so Poland will join us, that's great, we have 4 out of 4, and why is that, Poland, yeah, we have every alliance we want, and they have formed a personal union, that's great. So we are an ally to Titanic Order, but we really... I can't... <laughs> oh, okay. I should try to take Gotland, but that would have cost me too much. So a royal marriage, absolutely. So we can get up our legitimacy. Let's now declare against... Faster than me, but I can, can almost make it down here. Let's try. So you need more troops, probably like this. And the one danger in sieging this place is that in winter time. You get punished for it in attrition. Right now, yeah, mild winter, 1% extra. Who more do we want to be buddy with? Maybe Austria? 
Uh, let's improve Austria. I think admin power is better. And with these powers, admin power, diplomatic power, and military power, I can later on go up in technology. That's an important thing, especially military power in the beginning, because you get more morale, and more morale will give you longer fights and stuff like that. But that will be this episode for now uh, check, let's check in the later episode against my war against Novgorod and see how that goes over and out from Cusack the Gamer have a nice day and bye bye